the three best places to slide. Number one, into the DMs. Number two, into home base for the win. And number three, into the minor third of the relative minor of a key. And we're gonna talk about that third one today. And this is the example we're going to use to illustrate that. So kind of a simple enough little thing that sounds pretty cool. Today we are also going to be adding a slight delay because the pedal is on and I'm not gonna go over there and turn it off. So what are we talking about? Minor thirds. To me, the minor third, as I've said in previous videos, is kind of the most important, maybe not the most important, my favorite interval in guitar playing because of what it allows you to do. And specifically, the minor third of the relative minor. So any key you're in, we're using the key of C as an example, has a relative minor that works really well with it. I'll link you to a video on relative minor if you wanna learn a little bit more about the theory behind it. But basically, the sixth note in any key, the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, A, is gonna be a very important spot uh, for guitar playing, right? And I think one of the most important parts of that spot is the minor third. So if we're in the key of C, we're looking at A minor. A, B, C, A to C, right? So the reason that minor third, that interval, the space between the A and the C is a really cool sounding thing is because it's taking us from the relative minor to the major key. And there are a lot of different ways that we can play this, okay? And the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna slide into the root note of A. So this is gonna be the seventh fret of the D string, down a string, two frets lower. So seven, D, five, G. You can kind of play them together as kind of a piece of an A minor or just right here, okay? And I think what's really valuable is to kind of learn where this interval exists in relation to this first one, right? So if we have this A and we find the C right there and then we can, we can come down here and get the next octave of this, right? So if I go from here and then go to the B string and kind of slide my ring finger down three frets, that's gonna give me the octave of where I started, and its minor third is also gonna be down a string, two frets lower. So we can kind of add this to a chord, like we could take an A minor bar chord. And we get like kind of a cool little sound that maybe sounds like a lead part, but really you're just taking the notes of this chord and adding them in a different spot. We can do the same thing with the open A minor. Okay? Now another thing that you can do is you can add this interval over a major chord. So we said that we were in the key of C. Let's start with the C chord. And now the really cool thing about how uh, chord building works inside of a key, again, if you watch the other videos, you know that we have three major chords in a key and they have it on the one and the four and the five. So we talked about the one chord in C is C major. Its relative minor is the sixth chord, right? So C, mi C major and A minor go really well together. But let's talk about the five chord in the key of C, C, D, E, F, G. G major is another chord in the key of C. Now, it has its own relative minor. Like if you're in the key of G, G, A, B, C, D, E. E is gonna be its relative minor. Now, the beauty of this is every major chord has its own relative minor chord in that key, okay? So uh, let me kind of explain that. We, if we're in the key of G, the relative minor is E minor, right? So we could, or I'm down here. So we could play like the E minor scale. Now in the key of C, you can't play the E minor scale because we have that F, like a flat two, right? That would actually be known as the Phrygian mode or however you want to look at that. But if we just take the root and the minor third, we still end up getting G's relative minor chord. So G pairs really nicely with E minor, E minor being the third chord in the key of C. Now the other major chord in the key of C is F, it's the four chord, right? C, D, E, F. In the key of F, if F was one, its relative minor would be D, okay? So F and D minor go really well together in its own key, but also in the key of C, the four chord is F, and D minor is the two chord. 
And that's actually the same thing as if you were in the key of F and you had its relative minor. So every major chord in a key, its relative minor is in that same key, regardless of if you see the one, the four, and the five. Hopefully that made sense to you. Uh, if not, hit me up with some questions and maybe I'll like send you links to other videos on chord building and stuff like that, right? So we're gonna pair every one of these major chords in the key of C with its own minor third of its relative minor, okay? So if we go to a G major chord, I'm thinking, I mean, we could do this in a couple spots, but I'm gonna think of the 12th fret on the E string as being the E minor. There's the same thing we did with the A. Right here, the octave E, the 14th fret of the D string, back two frets. And then we do the same thing. That same kind of move that we did up here. E. Now if F, if we want to find its relative minor, we can go to a D, the 10th fret of the E string, and do the same thing. Okay? So, basically we can kind of do that just by adding these two chords. So we're going to start with an A minor chord, and then get its own relative minor into a G, into E minor, and then we don't always have to play the root and the minor third. We can kind of get creative and maybe just stop on the root, right? And then F. And we'll just kind of play just a, a root, its minor third and back, and then to the C. And then from the C we can go minor third, minor third, and end on a high A, the 15th fret, okay? So again, it's A minor, its own minor thirds, G major, its relative minor third, or its relative minor, E minor, its third, twice, F. So it's just one thing to think about because I think it's kind of cool that you can take the relative minor of a major chord and use it in a bunch of different keys, three different keys, because you can see it as being the one, the four, and the five. As far as those little pieces of scales are concerned, the root and the minor third is going to be in that key. So hopefully that was somewhat helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me up on Instagram, Twitter in the comments or the website, and I'll get back to you soon. Thanks a lot.